Hey guys, hoping all is well with everyone. So in this video, we are going to be looking at the question of the day, which has us solving the equation 3 times the quantity x minus 4 is equal to 2 times the quantity x minus 1. Now, I'm going to show you two approaches to this question. And the first one I'm going to show you is one that will trip up a lot of students and cause a lot of simple missed points. And then I'm going to show you another way that we can approach it, which kind of dodges the red flags that the first one has. So for this equation, when it comes to equations with variables on both sides, the goal is to get the variable alone by itself on one side as kind of your first step. Now in this case we're gonna have to use the distrib distributive property to clean it up first. So that'll be our st uh, first step. So step one will be use the distributive property to simplify both sides of the equation. Okay. So that'll be our first step. So in doing so, if we use the distributive property, we're going to get 3x minus 12 is equal to 2x minus 2. Okay? Now, this next step that the student will take is they're going to want to get the variable on one single side. So they're going to combine the like terms that are necessary. Now, remember, when it comes to these multi-sided variable equations, it does not matter whether or not the variable ends up on the left or the right when you get your final answer. That doesn't matter as long as the approach is still uh, the same and the correct steps are taken. So what's going to happen here is we're going to subtract 3x from both sides. So in doing so, we have 3x minus 3x minus 12 is equal to 2x minus 3x minus 2. Now, again, that cleans things up for you, especially on the left-hand side, because that positive 3x and that minus 3x are going to cancel. We want that to happen. So all that's left on your left side is a constant, which is negative 12. Great. We're, in, we're looking good and we're in good shape. And then when we simplify the... Let me clean that up a little bit. There we go. And then we simplify the right side, it's going to be 2x minus 3x, which is going to give us a negative 1x. And again, if you want to use that negative 1 as housekeeping, you can. That's There's nothing wrong with that. And then we have minus 2. So now what we're going to do is, now that we have decided and confirmed that we're going to keep the variable on the right, we're just going to simplify and get all the constants and like terms of the numbers or numerical values on the left. So step number 3 is going to be Add 2 to both sides to isolate the variable on the right further. <clears throat> okay. So now we'll go we'll kind of go up here. So we have negative 12 plus 2 is equal to negative 1x minus 2 plus 2. And again, you are getting closer and closer to isolating that variable completely because the negative 2 and the plus 2 are going to cancel. We want that, and then we can simplify it. Now, believe it or not, the red flag here is not the addition of a negative number and a positive number. So here we have negative 12 plus 2 is going to be negative 10. 
So negative 10 is going to be equal to negative 1x. Now, what we're going to do here to complete the isolation of the variable is that the coefficient on this variable is negative 1. So we have to undo the multiplication of negative 1 on x to get it fully by itself. So some students will stop here and then think that they're done because x is by itself. But technically speaking, it's not by itself. It still has a coefficient or multiplicative of negative 1 on it. So we can't say it's fully by itself. So what we're going to do here is we're going to divide by negative 1 as the next step. So step number four will be divide both sides by negative one. Okay, now here is where the red flag is. I'm going to use this in red. When we get x by itself, because now on the right, because negative one divided by negative one is just one. So now you just have one x or using the multiplicative identity of one, x times one is just itself or just x. Great. This is what's going to get a lot of students. Negative 10 divided by negative one is going to be a negative number divided by a negative number. And that's going to be a positive result. So negative 10 divided by negative one is positive 10. Okay. That's a really important thing to keep in mind as we're going forward in these algebraic and pre-algebraic equations and expressions. You're going to start to see a lot of negatives. You're going to see them being distributed and you're going to see them as coefficients. So we have to be able to really keep the housekeeping of when we are dividing uh, negatives by negatives and negatives by positives. So remember some of the rules. The only way that you can get a positive result, which we did, is if you divide a positive by a positive number or if you divide a negative by a negative number. So if your fraction has only one negative in it, your result is going to be a negative answer. Okay. So again, this is a big red flag here. So this situation, this guy right here. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the other way that you can approach it that kind of dodges the negative aspects of this question. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and create a new save. And then we have three, oops, three x minus four is equal to two x minus one. So the way that you can get around that one, and I'm going to kind of type the answers here, is you can start by doing your first step, which is distributing. So we have 3x minus 12 is equal to 2x minus 2. The next step that you can do is kind of the opposite, is instead of subtracting 3x from both sides, you can subtract 2x from both sides. So this is going to get the variable on the left-hand side, but what you're going to notice is that it's going to avoid a lot of variable or a lot of negative coefficients and negative terms. So if we do 3x, oops, 3x minus 2x minus 12 is equal to 2x minus 2x minus 2. Again, the 2x and the minus 2x will cancel. So simplifying this guy is going to result that these two will cancel. And then your simplified expression will be that 1x, I'll use the 1 as a coefficient just for housekeeping purposes, minus 12 is equal to negative 2. Okay. So now you have your variable on the left side. And even though we have negative numbers, um, we won't in a moment. So the biggest thing that I have changed is the coefficient on the variable is no longer negative. So now what I'm going to do is that I have decided that the variable is going to be on the left. So what I'm going to do to undo the subtraction of 12 on the variable, I'm going to add 12 to both sides. So we have 1x minus 12 plus 12 is equal to oops, is equal to negative 2 plus 12. 
So again, when we're at this stage, we're going to have some things cancel out. And remember, we want that to happen because we want to get the variable fully isolated, which at this case in um, time we have. So 1x is fully isolated because of that multiplicative identity of 1. That identity does not work for the negative 1 coefficient. Negative 1 and 1 are completely different in a lot of properties. So keep that in mind. So we have that 1x is equal to negative 2 plus 12. And again, if you're rem tr having trouble remembering your rules about like adding integers, a lot of um, situations here, you can flip-flop this too. So you can treat this negative 2 plus 12 as positive 12 minus 2. Um, you can use a number line as a visual aid to help you kind of see where um, you're going in terms of the movements and directions. Uh, but negative 2 plus 12 will be positive 10. So again, we get the same answer, but in this flow and direction, we avoided negative coefficients. So the moral of the story is, it all comes down to what you're most comfortable with. But we still approach the same answer. It's just very important, especially as you are all starting to prepare for your final exams. The red flags of negative coefficients and the rules of dividing and multiplying by negatives, keep those in mind as you go um, forward in your preparations for your exams. But I hope this helps you guys out, and I hope you guys um, have a wonderful holiday season. Best of luck on all of your upcoming exams. If you have any requests for anything, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, but please take good care and be safe. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Bye.